Hi everyone, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 2. Uh, lesson 2 deals with patterns and representation. In this lesson, you're going to create your own system for representing information. In other words, you're going to kind of create a code for the way you would like people to uh, maybe read letters or words, something on that order. If you remember the lesson, uh, lesson 1 dealt with how we were able to uh, draw conclusions based on data we saw. We were given some parameters. Uh, a person was allergic to eggs. Based on what we saw, we used the data from our eyes uh, to draw conclusions on whether a person could eat a particular meal or not. We also used the menu items, um, the recipes actually, not the menus, but the recipes to uh, also draw conclusions of whether a person um, could eat a particular meal based on what was in that meal. Today, this lesson is looks a little closer at, well, what is needed to uh, create a system of representation. I'd like you to go to uh, unit five uh, in your code.org account and uh, go to lesson two. Again, that's patterns and representation. And go ahead and click on uh, the only bubble that's on there. So this is gonna be kind of a quick one. A lot of it you're gonna be doing on your own. Um, okay, let's take a look real. This lesson looks closer at what is needed to create a system of representations. Um, you won't have groups again, so you'll be doing this on your own. You're going to create a system that can represent any letter in an alphabet using only a single stack of cards. Then create messages with the system and exchange with other groups. You're not going to be able to exchange with groups, but maybe you can show your parents what you've created and what you've done. Uh, then you'll discuss commonalities and that I'll discuss with you. Today we have two vocab words, uh, decode, to change how information is represented so that it can be read by a person to encode, to change how information is represented so that it can be read by a computer. Okay, so by a computer. Remember, when we are um, setting up code, we're setting up code for different reasons. Uh, uh, computers use HTML to read things that you may type into it. Um, what you're gonna be doing is setting up more or less a, um, an impromptu code uh, so that other people can read what you are uh, trying to relay a message to. Uh, based on characters, and I'll show you the sheet of characters. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, I want to ask you a couple questions. Um, when we go through and we represent, uh, so many things are can be represented in so many different ways. For instance, when we say yes, if I'm saying yes to something, how many different ways can I say yes? Uh, thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up. I can say see. Uh, I can say yes. Um, a lot of different ways you can say yes. No is the same way. Thumbs down, uh, no, uh, nicked, or just by shaking your head. So all of these are ways to represent different things that we use in everyday life. What I'm going to show you now is the activity guide based on that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, um, I've sent you an activity guide. The activity guide looks like this. And in this activity guide, you're representing information. Okay, the challenge, you need to create rules that let you represent any word you want using a single stack of cards. Now the cards that I'm gonna give you, they aren't really cards as far as cards go. Um, I'm gonna give you the sheet, you can cut them up if you'd like and make cards out of them, but it's a single sheet. And um, I think by looking at that single sheet, we can kind of create our own little code uh, with that. So, um, the challenge again, um, another person should be able to use the rules you write on the activity guide to read the words represented by your stack of cards without talking to you. So if you have a brother or sister or your parents, maybe one of them would like to try and decode your message, um, you'll have to keep keep the, um, oh, the cards available to them so they can actually see what you're uh, code is coming out to be. How to make a stack, place a card in a single stack, you know, a single neat stack, um, all face up in the same direction. The first card should be on top. Now, you don't really have to do that again. Um, just take your sheet, look at your sheet, and um, write how each letter will be represented below. Um, you also have down below a set of rules, so you want to follow the rules. What are your rules going to be? And we'll talk about the rules as we finish up. Um, do you want two letters only? Do you want two characters only? Um, it's up to you. You have to make up the rules for this, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you right now uh, the pattern of animals. Okay, so this is our animals. Oops, let me get them back up there. Okay, these are our animals. And this is our sheet. Okay, so side by side, this is kind of what it looks like. Now, again, I didn't cut up the animals for you or the characters for you. You can cut them up if you'd like, but I think that we can see them all um, right here on the screen. So what we have, pig, <clears throat> giraffe, a rabbit, a hippo, and a monkey. So based on these characters, you are supposed to take these over and create what you would like here to represent your A. Okay, so I'll give you a hint. For instance, <clears throat> let's go with, uh, let's see if I can type on this. Uh, let's say I want to use, I can do it a lot of different ways. I can start off with a single character for the A, single character for the B, and then start doubling up as I go. But when I do that, how am I going to know the difference when my letters start to run together? How am I going to be able to tell whether um, I'm saying an A or an L if I use one letter? So my code is going to be a little simpler to make it easier for me. I'm going to use two. So for instance, my first one, I'm going to start off at the top. This is going to be a monkey. So we'll type in a monkey, so M, and then I'll go hippo. So let's go MH, okay? Then I'll go down to the next one, and I think I'm gonna do monkey, so M again, and I'm gonna go with the next one, a rabbit, an R. So those are my first two. Now see my lines aren't coming out exactly correct because this is, um, trying to do it this way makes it real tough. Uh, I would let much rather have an overhead projector, but uh, this is over not. So I want you to spend a few minutes, <clears throat> I'm gonna give you about uh, 10 minutes, to go ahead and create your own code. You can do it the same way I did. You can use one if you'd like, uh, but just use your abbreviations. MH for monkey hippo, MR for monkey rabbit, um, maybe go down MG for monkey giraffe and so on. So create your own code all the way up to Z. Now, are you gonna use three uh, letters at a time? Or are you gonna do three characters at a time? That's up to you. You can if you'd like. Um, but I will give you a couple of hints when we get finished up that uh, if you use three, you might run into some problems. So go ahead and take about 10, 15 minutes to go ahead and set up your code uh, with the characters that are on the right. And you can do that just by looking at them. You don't have to cut them up. All right. So go ahead. I will give you a few minutes to do that and we'll continue on. Okay, welcome back. And uh, now that you've had time to do all that, um, did you find it easy? Uh, did you find it hard? Uh, what did you find that was kind of um, fun about it? Uh, not so fun about it. Uh, were there some things that you found complications in? Was it easy to make code? Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple examples of what I did. Now, here's the first one. The first one I chose to do again, was using two at a time. Why did I use two at a time? Okay, so here's where we start. Let's go ahead and do the letters. Monkey, monkey, hippo, hippo, rabbit, rabbit, and so on. I went two to start with for each one and then went and separated them up into giraffe, elephant, giraffe, monkey, and so on. Now, what do you see here? What you see is two symbols or two letters representing one alphabetic letter. So the first one, for instance, the monkey monkey represents the A. Why did I go with just two? Because when I go and I make my words, for instance, if I make the word cake, uh, we start with a C. C is RR. Okay. The next one is A, uh, MM. And K is, uh, where's K? JJK, ME, and E is PP. Now, why did I do just two? For one reason only. It was so that I knew what letters were separated by. Okay, I know that each letter only represents two letters. In other words, two symbols. I'll, I'll start calling our, our characters symbols. 
Okay, so A represented monkey monkey. So I knew that that A was only represented by two, two characters. It makes it easy for me because now I know that all of my letters only have two characters on. So if I have a long word, for instance, let's say syllable, I know that syllable is going to have, well, let's not use that one. That's kind of a long word. What am I thinking here? Let's use um, uh, triple, T-R-I-P-P-T-R-I-P-L-E. Triple is T-R-I-P-L-E is six, uh, six letters. So I know that a total of 12 characters are going to be in that word. And that's what makes it easy. So that makes it easy for me to separate. And so my ruling was every letter is exactly two cards long. So you know when one stops and the other starts. Okay, here's another example of something that was done a little bit differently. This one chose to use something a little different. Take a look at that. Tell me what you see. What do you see in there? Okay, this person used two letters or two symbols for the first one. Uh, when it got to F, there was three. When it got to K, there was four and so on. And when it got to, I mean, it, it ended up with a Z with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven symbols representing Z. But what does each one have in common? The E at the end. This person created this particular code with an E at the end. That way they know when each letter started and when each letter ended. Okay, so each letter ends. The A has M-E, it ends in E. Uh, the J has P-P-E, which is pig, pig, elephant. It ends in elephant. Uh, S, G, 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 E. That means giraffe, 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 elephant. Everything ended in the elephant. And that's what their uh, rule was. Every letter always ends with an elephant. So you know when to get to the next letter, okay? So when you go uh, and then an E, you know that you're done with that particular letter and you can correct your code or write your code out. And it's fairly simple to figure out when each one starts and ends. So based on that, this is the type of situation that you wanna go and create on your own. So now I want you to make a message. Make a message for um, your brother or sister or parents and write it on the back of the sheet of paper and go ahead and have them try and read your message. Make it simple. Don't make it real tough. Um, and use the characters that you have on your sheet of paper. If you cut them up, that's great. If you didn't, that's fine too. Uh, just let your parents or your um, siblings see what you've created and see if they can decode it. It's kind of like the old days when we used to use the decoder ring or the decoders that came in the cereal boxes. Uh, we always try to um, create something or make something up that no one else could read out of our decoder rings. So um, go ahead and do that. And uh, once you've done that, uh, you've completed this lesson. So in conclusion on the lesson, I just want you to remember um, the ultimate obje objective was to describe the necessary features of a system for representing information. You are representing information, you're representing the letters in this case by characters on a, on a uh, piece of paper. Uh, you're going to create and use a system for representing information, which is what you did. You're representing letters based on symbols. So that's really the conclusion of this um, particular lesson. Like I said, it would go quick. Again, this is patterns and representation, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in lesson three. Thank you very much.